Well, welcome everybody. You have joined the Genealogical Research Institute of Virginia, and we are pleased to have Ashley Ramey speaking for us about the Library of Virginia. First, a few things about Grebo. Uh, okay. There we go. Okay. Um, consider joining Grebo. Events like these. Okay. Um, most, of, most of these things are free to attend, but your contribution does help us bring them to you. Plus, as a, as a member, you will receive our quarterly newsletter and you will get discounts to our paid events. You can go to our Grebo website. There's a membership tab. I've also put a link here and I'll put that link in the chat box in a few minutes. Um, other perks include things like when we sell items such as the Gilmer maps. Uh, we have high quality prints of the Civil War maps covering parts of Virginia and North Carolina. And we have a, lot, a number of those available for sale. Grieva members do get a discount, but they are available to everybody. If you go to, again, if you go to the Grieva website, if you click Gilmer maps, <clears throat> there's a tab on the top and you can see which maps we have available. We don't have the full set, but we do have a large number of them. And you can click that and you can get information on which maps we have and how to order them. Um, you can also see Cassandra Farrell from the Library of Virginia gave us a, a talk last month about the maps and the, we, she was gracious enough to let us record just as Ashley is tonight. And you can see that recording, there's a link to it on the Gilmer Maps page on the Griba website. So check out those maps. They're really, really cool things to have. Some upcoming Griva events. Um, the next up after this is our DNA special interest group. We meet the second Tuesday of most months at 7 p.m. It's online for now. The next one is May 11th. And so we're talking about the women who contributed to our DNA. Um, the registration link is there. I'm also gonna post it in the chat box in a few minutes. After that, in Tuesday, May 25th at 7 p.m., we have David Gibbons talking about recent discoveries at Jamestown, bringing the 400-year-old site into the 21st century. So that should be lots of fun. The German special interest group also meets the first Tuesday, uh, meets the first Tuesday of most months. Um, we are skipping May, but in June, we have special guest Gunter Offner of the Familia Austria uh, website and society. Um, he's going to be talking about the Habsburg Empire. Now, since he's speaking from Vienna, we're changing the time to a little bit to accommodate his schedule. So instead of the usual 7 p.m., it's going to be at 1 p.m. Uh, you can register at the link shown above. It's also going to be in your email. Um, your Griva email, and I'm going to post this, and I'm going to post all of these links in the chat box in a few minutes. After that, we have our June Griva luncheon. Bring your lunch to your computer or your computer to your lunch, whichever, and uh, join us and talk about pretty much whatever. Uh, if you have your favorite book or website or genealogical find or what you've been doing during the pandemic, we'd love to hear about it. So that is Monday, June 14th at noon. If you were in the uh, DNA special interest group a couple of weeks ago, I said it was the 21st. I'm sorry, I lied, it's the 14th. So it's June 14th at noon. We also have a save the date announcement. Our Briva fall conference will be Saturday, October 2nd, and we have Mark Lowe. Um, this is another benefit of membership. You will have a discount if you're a member. Um, Mark Lowe is a full-time professional genealogist, author, and lecturer. While sharing personal experiences that help beginning and experienced researchers gain new skills and insights for research, he specializes in original records and manuscripts throughout the South. He lives in Robertson County, Tennessee, and that lies in Middle Tennessee along the Kentucky border. So we're looking forward to that. He was uh, with us a few years ago as well, so we're, we're looking forward to having him back. And why not, well, why just touch for uh, Griva events? Uh, Ashley, one of the things that I'll mention when I introduce her tonight is uh, she coordinates their, uh, the Library of Virginia's genealogy workshop series. So some of the upcoming events are Portals to a Jewish Heritage, Researching Jewish Genealogy with a Southern Accent in May, and African American Migration in June, and Early Virginia Genealogy in July. I'm gonna post this link along with the others in, just, in the chat box in just a moment. And she's going to talk about it as well, I'm sure. 
Um, we do have handouts tonight. You can find them on the Greva website. I've, I've got a screenshot showing you where. Um, just, just load the website, scroll down a little bit. You'll see a link. There are seven of them. So she's uh, graciously given us lots of great information we're looking forward to exploring. So after all that, we are ready to, to introduce uh, Ashley. The Library of Virginia has a vast array of online collections to help genealogists find their Virginia ancestors. Ashley's presentation will focus on the Virginia memory, the library's digital collections. Learn all about them, how to find them, and how to use them from the comfort of your sofa. Ashley Ramey is the com Community Outreach Specialist for the Library of Virginia, where she coordinates the genealogy workshop series I just mentioned, and uh, genealogical programs and community outre outreach. She graduated from Virginia Commonwealth University with a bachelor's degree in history and a master's degree in history with a concentration on the early colonial period of in Virginia and the United States, in addition to the African and indig indigenous peoples slavery. Ashley also focused on 19th and 20th century race relations in Virginia. Previously, she was the site coordinator at the Preservation for Virginia's John Marshall House in Richmond, Virginia. So with that, welcome Ashley. I'm going to Hi, stop everyone. this and feel free to share your screen and then I'll mute me. All right, I'm gonna share my screen and now hopefully minus the fact you're seeing disney my other <laughs> my other place away from home all right some say that's the happiest place on earth but some of us say that that, that the library of virginia is the happiest place on earth i'm a little biased um, so i'm going to say both uh, it's going to be a porn it's going to be we are seeing your pre your uh, presentation view again okay. you're seeing the presentation view let's swap yeah okay you're seeing full screen yes okay perfect, perfect. thank you you're welcome. So hi, everyone. I am Ashley Ramey. I'm the Community Outreach Specialist for the Library of Virginia, and I want to thank Griva and especially Paula and Donna for inviting me and helping me with this presentation and running everything smoothly tonight. And so today I'm going to talk to you about doing your genealogy research from home. Um, since we do have a rather large crowd, I would ask everyone to hold their questions to the end and then um, we I can answer them then. And if you don't, I'll provide my email and you can email me after the presentation. So let's go ahead and get started. So today's agenda, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the Library of Virginia, benefits of having a Library of Virginia library card, how to navigate our website and get into some of our um, digital collections that are available, available to all patrons, and then specifically talking about what's available on Virginia memory. All right. My second home away from home, the Library of Virginia, was founded in 1823 by the General Assembly to care for the state's growing book collection. So um, if none of you have been down to downtown Richmond, that is our lovely building and the building behind me, that's our front entrance. Um, we're located at 800 East Broad Street in downtown Richmond. So we are diagonally across the street from the state capitol. So if you kind of know where the state capitol is, cross the street and right like a, a block and a half down we are right there on broad street um, currently we have over 129 million different things in our collection so that ranges from governor's papers from 1607 up until modern day that is newspapers, that's journals, that's family Bibles, that's um, we have the insurance policy for Mount Vernon, we have maps, we have Confederate money, we have the state's copy of the Bill of Rights, we have wills, we have deeds, we have ev almost everything, I'm not going to say everything, but we have almost everything in our collection and this is free to anyone who has a Library of Virginia card to use. Um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Library of Virginia is only open Monday, uh, Tuesday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. by appointment. Um, I do advise anyone that's planning to visit the library to call at least a week or two weeks in advance from when you're planning to visit, just to make sure that you get your spot for what time you would like and make sure you can reserve a spot on the microfilm or in our archives research room or any other place in the library that you have access to. Um, so if you have any questions,
questions about parking, we do have parking, so don't worry about coming to downtown Richmond. I know the main thing I hear about people not wanting to come to the library is that I don't want to come to the library and get a ticket. We have parking underneath our building. You can park there all day while the library is open. Um, if you need directions, need information about closing or programs, please visit our website, which is right here at the bottom of the screen. So first, we're going to talk about the benefits of having a Library of Virginia card. So anyone in the world can have a Library of Virginia card. This is what a Library of Virginia card looks like. So you, as a Virginia resident or a non-Virginia resident, has access to doing research at our institu institution and has access to any of our digital collections that are available online. Um, every patron has access to our closed stacks to pull, have books pulled down for them to re review while they're at the institution. Um, you have access to our archives manuscripts collection. You have um, access to our special collections, but you do have to make an appointment for special collections. We do have, they have different hours than our regular reading rooms. Um, you have access to our map collections, either digitally or available through special collections. And with your Library of Virginia card, you can make copies and prints from it, and that's how you can put money on there as well. However, if you're a Virginia resident, there are some benefits of being a Virginia resident rather a non-Virginia resident. Virginia residents are able to check out books. They have access to some of our commercial websites from home, uh, commercial databases and subscriptions from home. Um, and then you have a, access to do a couple other things at our institution that non-Virginia residents don't have. And if you have any questions about policies, how to sign up for a card, how to access all of this information, please visit this website at the bottom. So let's talk about what's new. There are some new big changes at the Library of Virginia. We're constantly making our collections accessible for our researchers and patrons. So the first thing would be our LibGuides. LibGuides, if you're familiar with our research guides and bibliographies and our old, our older um, ca our catalog, we had specific indexes and databases that the Library of Virginia produced. Um, those have been um, put into a system called LibGuides. This makes it more it makes it easier for people to interact with them. They're not just PDF printouts of um, instructions. So you can dive into the indexes and look into them. You have access to research in them, and then you can be able to click out to other places on our website or other places we have linked to through the LibGuides database. Um, this is a collection of the indexes that we are currently have made available for our patrons. Um, so I will talk about some of these later. So we have the Bristol Cemetery Index, the Confederate um, Disability Applications. We have land patents. We have land deeds, certain newspapers, uh, mutual insurance societies. We're in the process of adding a lot of our indexes that were in our old catalog where you could click the different tabs at the top of the screen and search them individually. We're trying to make that available and you'll be able to eventually search them all through our catalog as well. And so this is an example of our LibGuides, one of the LibGuides. So you would be able to search directly in our Virginia death, uh, death index of 1853 to 1896. And you can type in the name, the date, or if you know they were enslaved or free, you can type in that information as well. Um, it's really important to remember in Virginia between the years of Between the years of 1896 and 1912, the, uh, the state of Virginia did, ooh, someone is unmuted. So if someone can mute themselves for me. That would I, I, I took care of it. And I'm sorry, I accidentally muted you. The, the button to admit newcomers is right next to the button to mute you. So I'm gonna that's, try to fix that. That's okay. Um, sorry so about in, that. 
That's okay. Um, so in Virginia, between the years of 1896 through 1912, there are no official vital statistic records in the state of Virginia. So you'll see that this is a cutoff 1896. That is why there is a cutoff. Um, there is a research guide in the Library of Virginia's website that explains the why Virginia and all its wiseness decided to not collect that information and when it picked up again. It picked up in 1912. So from 1912 up until the present day, all vital statistics records are recorded in Virginia. Let's move on. Come on. Another new thing at the Library of Virginia is our catalog. Our catalog has become more user-friendly I know some people are gonna look at me and say, no, it's not. I don't know what you're talking about, but it is user-friendly, I promise. Um, you can search our catalog specifically in different collections now. You can look at books and government publications, journals, newspaper titles, archives and manuscripts collections, a selection of our maps, because we're still um, migrating some of those over as well. And then some of the digital collection and indexes that I spoke about a few minutes ago. Um, so if you want to see the full list of all the indexes that are available, you can click here. But oh, I, I talk about it later in my presentation. You can search for land patents, the family Bibles, all of that information in our, in our new catalog. And it's super easy to use, I promise. I will demonstrate how to get to the catalog and how to access it and search everything. And thereafter, I finish my presentation as well. The other really super duper exciting announcement for the Library of Virginia is in this year, we became an affiliate library of FamilySearch. And I think everybody's familiar with FamilySearch. It's a free online genealogical resource um, supported by the LDS Church. Um, so the Library of Virginia became an affiliate library. So that allows our patrons, when they come into our building, they have access to all of the information available online and the information that's not available online through the free version. So that is roughly over 4 million different digitized records. So that is the United States, that's North America, and that's international. So it's not just strictly United States and Virginia. You have access to the full collection. All right. We're going to dive now into navigating the Library of Virginia's website, how to get to the catalog and how to do maneuver around our website. So our website is www.lva.virginia.gov. And so when you type that in, you're gonna get our lovely homepage. And there's a couple of things that I want to point out to you. So on the screen up at the top, can you see my arrow? at the top of the page, my little pointer. Um, yep. At the top, this is the Google search bar. So you can search our full website, which is usually the automatic selection, or you can search strictly in our catalog. So you can type there first, but if you want to go directly to our catalog, you want to come over to the section under for the public and go down to search the catalog, the LVA catalog. If you want to look at some of the databases that you, if you're a Virginia resident, have access at home, you need to go right here to databases. And then if you would like to access some of the information like our research guides and bibliographies and indexes, you need to go right here to research guides and indexes. So, when you click on search the catalog, you'll get a blank screen, blank image of our catalog that look like this, and you will type in whatever you're looking for. And then in this drop down arrow here, you can specifically select either search everything that's available in our catalog, search just for publication, pub books, search for just in the archives, just newspaper. You, let's start over. So you can Sorry about search, that. that's okay. You can search specific sections of our collection or you can search everything. 
I advise if you don't know what you're looking for, search everything. But if you know specifically what you're looking for is possibly original or it's um, in a digital collection, or you think it might be in a digital collection, I would start there. Um, it's easier and it's a lot harder to get lost and confused in our collections. I have seen people be like, you don't have this. And I'm like, yes, we do. You just have to take some extra steps. Um, so in the Library of Virginia's collection, we have over 6,000 family Bibles that we have made digitally available to anyone without a Library of Virginia card. You can access them through our catalog. So if you go to our catalog, and you type in the family name you're looking for. So I just did a general search. You would type in Smith Family Bible. This is what it's going to look like. If you know you want to refine your search, you can click any of these refined sections here. And then these are the actual items that you can look at. So the this for this particular search, I was looking for this specific Smith Family Bible from 1762 to 1823. Oops. And so when you pull that up, you're gonna get a screen that looks like this. So this is gonna be what is available. It'll tell you all the information about the collection or the specific record. So this first, um, these, this first area where this arrow is pointing to, this is gonna provide you with all the citation and how to save the information. You can print it, you can save the link, or you can email it to yourself. Um, right here where it says links, that's how you can access the digital copy of the record. And then if there's any issues with, um, you can't see the old photo stat or the microfilm reading copy of it is unlegible, you want to copy down this um, local call number. So when you come to the Library of Virginia, I need to look at the family Bible with the accession number 2236630. So you can pass that along to the archivist in the manuscripts room. Um, this would also tell you the years that the Bible record has in its collection, how many pages it is, the original Bible when it was printed. And it'll probably provide you some other information of other names in that particular Bible record. For this one, it just has the Smith family, the Smith family in it, as well as it tells you the format that the record is in. So this one is in a negative photostat. So when it says negative photostat, it means this. It means a black and white image of the family Bible. So we are always asking our patrons and researchers that are doing any genealogy research, please let us get a photocopy or a high res uh, copy of your family Bible, or we can get a high res copy of it and give you the family Bible back. We just want that information for our collection. So if you have a family Bible that you want to pass along to the library, please give it to us. We always are looking for it. We're the better institution in the state. I'm biased, don't just take my word for it. Um, so this is a copy of the Smith Family Bible from 1762 to 1823. And so in this, you'll find Samuel Smith and Sally Smith, his wife was married the 24th day of May, 1792. Um, you will have the, uh, the children that are list he, listed here and further in the family Bible, you can find who was married, who died, who had children, all of the information that could fill the gaps when the state of Virginia did not take, collect that information. Okay, we're gonna move right along. Another extremely useful record in our collection are our land patent and our land grants and our land records. They're extremely beneficial if you know your family had land or possibly owned land in Virginia. You would go back to the original search catalog page, type in the top land patents. Um, if you don't really know the time frame, if you don't know the specific area you're looking for, that can help you figure out where to search. But then if you do know they're specifically in the Northern Neck Territory, you can refine your search. Like I stated earlier, you can refine it to the land office and the Northern Neck Patents and Land Records. 
And these records as well are available online for you to have access to. So these are some of them that are available. And so once you click on that information to view it online, this is what you will see. You're gonna see a bunch of pages that are available that you can download, print, do whatever you would like with. And this is the original document. Um, usually these are scanned from the microfilm or from the original document. So if they're not really great, they're kind of old, you can always come to the library to ask to see it in its original form, unless the microfilm or the microphone is damaged. Um, so this is the information. This is from With County. This is for 65 acres on the waters of Cripple Creek adjoining Samuel Patton's land. Um, it's dated September 27, 1802. And it also gives you the exact information you will need when you come to the Library of Virginia and you would like to see it on the microfilm if you couldn't get it a very clear picture. Databases. Our databases are numerous. We have so many of them. We have access to Fold3, we have access to Ancestry, we have access to newspaper, we have newspapers, we have access to um, different ProQuest um, newspaper collections, different ProQuest plantation records. We have access to some Civil War databases. Um, as Virginia residents, certain databases you can access at home. However, Ancestry and Full 3 are no longer accessible from home. They, due to contractual information, we were not, were not allowed to make those accessible from home. But you can come to the library and use those databases, no matter if you're an in-state or out-of-state patron. You have access to those by having a Library of Virginia card. Let's talk about microfilm. Microfilm are fabulous information. That's how we preserved a lot of our information that could not be accessible in an original format. And so at the Library of Virginia, we have all of our microfilm arranged either by the county or by the independent city in Virginia. So when you go to this web page on the screen, the microfilm is going to, it's going to pull up a page that looks like this. You can search all of the counties, then followed by all the independent cities. So I selected Culpeper County in Virginia, and this is what it's going to look like when you pull it up. So you're going to have the date that the county was formed, which was 1749. You're going to have the county that it was formed out of. That is super important because that will lead you to other places to look if the record is not in Culpeper County. Um, another important thing to look at is when it has a lost record note. So a large amount of the loose records and some of the minute books prior to 1840 are missing and presumably due to the Civil War and events to the courthouse fires. So if you're looking for anything prior to, certain things prior to 1840, I'm sorry, they don't exist. They might not be around. They might be in other database, another database, which I will talk about later in my presentation, but they're not going to be around. I'm sorry. But these are the different types of records that we do have available. The reels, which you can find out prior to coming to the visit the Library of Virginia. So if you're planning a visit and you want to look at multiple microfilm reels, I advise you to pull this page up look at the information and say, I want to look at this reel, this reel, this reel. Or you can do something called interlibrary loan. It is a fabulous resource for anyone in Virginia or other parts of the country. Um, the Library of Virginia will send out microphone copies of certain records if it's allowed, as well as books to other public libraries or university or college libraries for you to access. So if you're interested in seeing possibly an uh, interlibrary loan copy of a microfilm reel, so if you're looking at this bond book from 1892 through 1905, Luckily, it has interlibrary loan. This ILL means it's available for you to interlibrary loan. You would contact your local public library 
or the university or historical society you're working with at that time, and they will get in contact with the Library of Virginia and we will send it to that public library or other institution for you to have access to. All right, we're gonna take a breather. Whew, that's all the stuff that's available on our website, through our catalog, and that's available on microfilm. Now we're going to dive into Virginia memory. This is where all of our digital collections that anyone, I mean anyone, has access to from home without a library card. You don't have to worry about do I have a library card? Is it renewed? You don't have to worry about any of that when you get to this section of our website. So our this part of our website, this is Virginia Memory. The website is www.virginia, spelled out, memory.com. So this is where we host all of our digital collections, exhibitions, maps, any of our teach, some of our teachers um, information and our blog. So this is, we've made a lot of our information available online. And I know someone's gonna ask how much of the 129 million different things in your collection is available online? This much, like the itty bitty amount between my finger. It's that much. It takes a lot of money and space and software to make sure we keep all of this stuff up to date. So it's going to be a long time before people can say all of our stuff is online and I don't even expect all of our stuff to ever be online, but we are trying to make a lot of the records that people use a lot and, uh, available online. So to access some of the collections on Virginia Memory, you can search them first through collections A to Z, or you can search them by specific topics. And if you're looking for specific topics, you can look at Virginia history and culture, biographical and genealogical, maps and architecture, county and city research, African-American research, military newspapers, historic Virginia government, web archiving, photo collections, land office and patent grants, and you're like, <gasps> overwhelming. Take a deep breath and look at it because you can click specific things and only certain um, digital collections are available. There's no need to stress or figure, well, worry about not being able to find what you're looking for. And the other option is to search for collections A to Z. So if you know a specific collection like our Virginia Untold or Virginia Chronicle, you can go specifically to the V's or the U and it will scroll down there automatically and bring you to the collection of those um, records that digital, digital collection. So the first digital collection I'm going to talk to you about is Virginia Chronicle. I'm going to say this a lot. It's one of my favorite digital collections that we have at the library. We have this digital collection is where we host a lot of our newspaper collection. This is where we archive, have a historical archive of Virginia newspapers as well as some other states as well. And as of January 2021, we had added 1.3 million more pages to this collection. And these, this is a sample, just a sample of some of the newspapers that are added to the collection. So we have church newspapers, we have religious newspapers, we have African-American newspapers, we have prohibition newspapers, we have student newspapers, we have alternative newspapers, we have foreign language newspapers. We have a lot of these newspapers available for you to use at home. And you're probably wondering, why should I use a newspaper? So for anyone that's doing African-American research during a certain period of time in Virginia's history, African-American history or events were not always printed in the mainstream newspaper. And the African-Americans that lived in Virginia decided to create their own. And so one of them is the Richmond Planet that was based in Richmond, where the Library of Virginia is located on 800 East Broad Street. And this is a digital copy of the newspaper. This is what it's going to look 
look like when you get into Virginia Chronicle. And you can download the entire run of the paper. You can snippet uh, certain articles if you're interested in them, because you can find obituaries, marriage announcements. You can find out if certain events are going on in the state or in the city. And specifically with the Richmond Planet, its editor, John Mitchell Jr., travel throughout Virginia recording the stories and the injustices served it suffered by African Americans in the state. And one of them was lynchings. He traveled throughout the state of Virginia to record the lynchings of African American men, women, and children. So he would report that in his newspaper. Another resource that you have access to through Virginia Chronicle is our religious newspapers. So in Virginia, many of the denominations did print some of their own religious newspapers that had announcements about marriages, that had announcements about deaths, who was in a club, who get, was donating money, and possibly who got kicked out of the church, um, who moved to different parts of the church, different parts of the state. All of that information was available in church newsletters or newspapers. And this is one of them. This is the Presbyterian of the South. This gave information of Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina. It gave all the information about some of the southern states throughout the United States. And specifically, I pulled out sections on marriages and deaths. So these, this is how you can make snippets of at a marriage announcement, or you can make a snippet of a death, or you can take a snippet of the entire front page or pages throughout the newspaper. Another great resource is our chancery records. Excuse me. Chancery records are great sources of information because chanceries dealt with equity. These are court cases that dealt with equity. So if you have an ancestor that fought with his brother over the family land or in saying that he didn't get enough, enough of the land and so he's going to contest this in court, they would have gone to a, a chancery court to go over this um, dispute in a will. Um, all, every county and city in Virginia had a chancery circuit court and so these every county should have these available for you to use. Um, if they're not available in the Chancery Record Index, they're also available in its original form at the Library of Virginia or at the local courthouse. But I would advise starting with us first, either through the Chancery Record Index or at the library to see if the records are available. And currently, there are over 274,000 cases indexed in this specific database and 11.5 million images of chancery causes available to you. And we're constantly adding new counties, adding new information available to you. So these are all the counties that we just recently added to our collection. And these are the ones we're going to be adding once they finish digitizing through our system. And this is an example of a chancery cause that you will be able to pull up as well as this. So when you access the chancery cause, you're going to see a folder like this. And there are certain things that you should figure out and pull out from your information. The first thing being the dates up in the corner. So that this year, 1786, is going to be the year that the chancery case was over. It's not going to be the year that it began. So if you think you have an idea of when it was available, you can search on the chancery records a time span. Additionally, you can also search specific counties. You can look for the court case, the cause, the name of the cause. You're going to find out what's going on in the cause. This specific cause is fighting over somebody's will. And sometimes wills are hard to find. They might not exist other places. And this is a place for you to find a will if you can't find it on microfilm or the original, um, original format. And then you're going to find names. 
Names, names, names. These names could be witnesses. These names could be involved in the court case. These could be people suing over the disputing of the will. So you always want to keep track of those names because those are other places for you to look in our collection to find other ways of finding your ancestor or finding more information on them. And so once you get into past the folder, this is what you're going to look at. It's going to be the original, um, the original document. I'm sorry, we do not transcribe these, but we do have a short presentation on our YouTube channel that talks to you about how to read old handwriting, but you can download, you can print, you can, once you do that, you can scribble all over it to help transcribe it. We do not care what you do with it once you have it in your possession. So feel free to copy, print, and use that however you want in your um, genealogical research. The next thing I would like to talk about are legislative petitions. So to do anything, absolutely anything in the state of Virginia between the years of 1776 up into 1865, you had to petition the General Assembly. So if you wanted a divorce, you had to petition the General Assembly. If you wanted to have, be naturalized, you had to petition the General Assembly. If there was dispute over deeds or wills or uh, land information, you had to petition the General Assembly to get them to um, make a decision. Sometimes it took a little bit longer than you think, but that's how the government in Virginia worked. And so once you get to the legislative petitions, this is what the home page is going to look like. You can search by keywords. So if you have a family member, if you know they were involved in naturalizations or will or deed or divorce, you can search that in the keyword. Um, you can type in names in there as well. And if you know the specific county that you're looking at, you can search that. And then you can also search specific records like deeds, manumission papers, if you're looking for naturalizations, divorces, deeds, resolutions, incorporations of new counties, all of that information had to be approved by the General Assembly. And this is an example of one. This is from Elizabeth City County. Um, this is the heirs of Captain William M. Armstead asking for a law requiring the Auditor of Public Accounts to issue the payment of Virginia military land warrants for the Treasury from the Treasury. So they're asking the General Assembly to make the Auditor of Public Accounts. That is how we in Virginia did some of our payment, payment methods to um, its citizens or people asking for payment to pay out the um, land warrants that their ancestor received during the Revolutionary War, if I remember correctly. So this will have all the connections of how the family received the land, who, where he fought, what battles he fought in, when he received the land. And then at the bottom, and it would have the actual heir signing the information. Um, legislative petitions are extremely helpful for women, if you're looking for women as well, and African-Americans that have newly been given their um, freedom. This one is from Jefferson County. It is a petition from John Alset asking for compensation for two enslaved people that he lost during John Brown's raid. So in Virginia, there was a law that stipulated that if any of your enslaved population or people were involved in an uprising or rebellion, and then they were put to death, the state of Virginia owed you a payment for their loss of property. So this is John also asking the state of Virginia to pay him for his loss of two enslaved people. All right, if you're doing any African-American research in Virginia, this is one of my favorite and most useful databases for you. This is our Virginia Untold, the African-American narrative. This is where you will find 
a good portion of our pre-1865 or pre-1870 records in our collection because a lot of African-Americans or people doing African-American genealogy or people of African-American descent always say that they have problems getting back past 1870 or past 1865. And this database will help you do that because this is where we have collected over 15,000 different records and over, identify over 200,000 different names. And in this collection, we have bills of sale, colonization records, we have deeds of emancipation, legislative petitions, freedom suits, um, petitions to be re-enslaved. We have multiple different types of records for you to use. Um, this is a petition for re-enslavement. This is a petition from Caesar dated 1858. So in Virginia, there was a law in 1806 that once you were granted your freedom, you had one year to gather all of your belongings, raise enough funds, and then you had to leave the state of Virginia and never come back. And if you did come back, you had the possibility of being re-enslaved in the state of Virginia. And this is a letter from Caesar. He states that he did have his freedom in Prince Edward County, and he was given it by John Watson in his last will and testament. However, he wishes to stay in Prince Edward County in the state of Virginia, and he's asking to be re-enslaved. So this document gives a person that's doing African-American genealogy or is connected to Caesar a lot of information because it's not just this one page. I think this one is maybe three pages long. It gives you where he was, which is Prince Edward County. It gives you his last enslaver. You can go and look in his papers. You can find the will for William uh, John Watson. You can find multiple other places to look to find information on your ancestor. So in 2019, the Library of Virginia had a got a partnership with the Virginia Museum of History and Culture. They also had their own 1865 African American database called Unknown No Longer. It was launched in 2011, and this provides similar information to the Library's Virginia Untold. The best thing is that these two databases are now housed at the Library of Virginia for anyone to have access to and has a more comprehensive information of African-American genealogy in Virginia for pre-1865. And so this is a digital copy of the agreement from William Bumpus to with John uh, McReynolds concerning the sale of an African enslaved person named Joe from April 29th, 1786. So this is a bill of sale between two individuals for the enslaved man, Joe. So this will tell you where William Bumpus was, who he's selling him to, how much he was selling him for, um, his duties. So, so Joe was a blacksmith. So you can find all of this information out in this documentation. All right. Now we're going to talk about some other digital resources that are available on Virginia Memory and other um, uh, social media platforms and websites that we have access to at the Library of Virginia. The first being our Making History Transcribe. So this is where we have made a lot of our digital collections. We ask the public to go on this website and transcribe some of our old records and make them available digitally. So we have scanned the original document, which is here. You can zoom in. Oop. Ah. You can zoom in, you can't do that on this one, not on my PowerPoint. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can look at specific words, and then off to the side, you can type what you think the record is saying. Um, don't worry about if you don't think you've transcribed it correctly. We have people at the Library of Virginia that review this and um, make sure it's uh, correct prior to it being added to a digital collection. So we have, church records on transcribe. We also have uh, collections of Virginia Untold. We we'll might have specific um, 
record. So we've had the Equal Suffrage League papers on there. That was an um, organization that helped support women getting the right to vote in Virginia that campaigned for that. So we have a large collection of their papers. We will have military information on there as well. So if you we're wondering, oh, is this record available? You can also check on Virginia um, Making History Transcribed to see if it's available. And once it's transcribed and checked, it will be placed in our, depending on where it, um, it needs to go on Virginia Memory or through our catalog. Another one of our transcription services is from the page. This is mainly used for actual format uh, formats or uh, basic, um, forms. So this is our World War I questionnaires. Um, right after the World War I, Governor Westmoreland Davis decided he wanted a commission in Virginia to find out what our Virginia soldiers and nurses did while they were overseas. So in the library co library's collection, we have large, I mean large amounts of these um, questionnaires in our uh, collection. They were either filled out by the veterans or their family members. And then with certain uh, World War I questionnaires, family members sent in photos. So in these collections, you can find uh, the name, birth, education, rank, any fraternal orders. You can find a lot of information. And so when you go on from the page, you will get a scan copy like our transcription service, but then you will just have to go and type in the name for each slot. So you can find tons of information in them. Um, we do have a small collection for World War II. It is not as vast as World War I, but there is a collection for it. Another great resource is our Finding Your Virginia Roots Facebook group. Um, I am in charge of this Facebook group, and this is where I am constantly posting information on new things added to our collection, either books or records that are made uh, digital. I'm also posting articles on different um, records, how to use them, um, other upcoming events. If we record any of our programs, I will. Um, put them on there as well if they're based on genealogy. And then if you have any questions about, is this record at the Library of Virginia? Or does anybody know any of these last names? Are you connected with them? We have professional genealogists as well as, well as advanced genealogists or beginners on this page. So please feel free to join and ask your questions. People are always willing to help someone out. Um, if I don't answer them within a couple of hours, I know some of the group members, some of our dedicated group members will jump in and answer your questions as well. Then finally, we have a YouTube. It's not finally, it's one of those next things. Um, on our YouTube playlist, which is on our main website, all the way at the bottom, I can show you where that can be found. We have made available our beginner genealogy workshops. So we were at the beginning of COVID, we were like, how can we reach our public since our institution is closed down, they can't come into our building. So we decided to record our beginner genealogy workshop. We split it into three separate um, webinars. And so you have access to that. Um, you have information on our private papers collection, and then you have information on our African-American uh, research as well. And then we are constantly adding more information on there as well. And then we will put any of our genealogy programs um, like book talks or lectures on this playlist as well. And like Paula mentioned, we also have genealogy workshops. They are fabulous. Um, if you attended any of our in-person ones, they were three hours. You could be in the conference rooms in our buildings, and then once it was over, you can do research. However, we had to switch it up for the virtual world, but they are an hour long. Um, the, usually the 
presenter, the archivist, or the outside speaker will speak for an hour, and then they will leave 10 to 15 minutes for you to ask questions. And if not, if all the questions aren't available to be asked, then um, I will send a Google Doc to the presenter and they will answer them then, and I will send them back out to the attendees. So these are our two upcoming genealogy workshops. We have one not next Friday, but the following Friday, May 7th, with his Portals to a Jewish um, Heritage, Researching Jewish Genealogy with a Southern Accent, and then African American Migration. And if you have any questions about getting in contact with the library regarding genealogy workshops or how do you register, you can contact me or you can re uh, use this web page, this web link at the bottom of the page. Finally, if you have any questions, please email me, email the library, call us. We do not accept carrier pigeons. We will, we, I still think we do faxes, um, but please feel free to get in contact with us. We are more than happy to help you with any of your genealogy research. Um, we won't do it. We're not going to be like Henry Louis Gates and hand you a book and say, here's your genealogy. We're not going to do that, but we are going to help you find any of those records in our collection to help you navigate anything that we have in our institution. So there is my um, what my email address, and that's how you can get in contact with the archivist, the archive reference in the library of residence or circulation. So I'm gonna keep that up for a second, but then I would like to say thank you for allowing me to present tonight. I wanna to thank Donna, Paula, and everyone involved in Griva. And now I'm gonna answer some of your questions. I, I see some faces of, oh my God, <laughs> just did so much stuff in a short amount of time. Don't stress, all of this is available through the handouts on, especially on that one that has a lot of the links. I provide a lot of um, links to those specific collections I talked about. We have the, the handouts are on the Griva website and this talk is being recorded too. So you can go back and watch again. And, and, and what's that she said again? Let me see, oh, okay. Um, so we're, we're grateful that you allowed us to, to uh, do that. Um, I'm gonna read some of the questions from the chat box. Okay. For Virginia residents, you said we can check out books. Do you yes. have to go to the library or is there a mailing or interlibrary loan option? So if you're a Virginia resident, depending on where you are, you can possibly do an interlibrary loan. Um, on our catalog, you can reserve um, Certain books you can say, I want to pull this one or this one and this one. I think there's a limit you can pull out. Um, you can tell them I'm going to come on a specific day to pick them up. We do not um, mail them out to addresses. You will have to still come to the Library of Virginia to pick them up. But on our catalog, you have access to say, I want to check out this one. And then I'm going to pick it out, pick it up on the fr on a Friday or a Thursday. You can say that the time or the date you want to pick them up. Terrific. You talked about uh, land records. Do those yes. include areas that are now West Virginia? Yes, they do. They include West Virginia and some of Kentucky. So in the Library of Virginia's collection, we do have some West Virginia records, some North Carolina records, some Kentucky records. Um, some of those records, the original records are going to be at that institution's state library or state archive. So if you ever need a copy of them, you will have to go to them, but you can view those through our microfilm. Um, I think most of those records are on microfilm or you can access them through Ancestry or Family Search. I think she was talking about the ones that, uh, the original land records that are, are digitized and online. Okay, so the ones for Virginia, West Virginia. Some, the, well, well so we're Virginia at the time. So some of those will might be available. Hold on, let me pull that up for you. Let me okay. stop sharing my screen for two seconds. <laughs> the web page. And so when, can you see my homepage here? 
Yes. Okay, so if I'm you looking go at the to, Library of Virginia site, yeah. Yes, the Virgi Library of Virginia, not Disney. Perfect. Library of Virginia. <laughs> um, so if you go to up here in the Google search bar and you type in West Virginia Records and you hit search, it might take a second. Come on. Not the website or the catalog? I, it's probably the oh, per website. Perfect. <laughs> You can click right there where it says Library of Virginia, West Virginia Records, and it's going to tell you everything that we have in the Library of Virginia's collection for West Virginia Records. And we have that as well as for um, Kentucky Records as well. So it's going to tell you what land office patents and grants and land records are available, what land tax records, personal property tax records, um, legislative petitions, and then how to get copies. I'm sorry, my mouse is acting weird. And it's going to give you the exact information of who you have to contact for West Virginia. Terrific. And I can Next drop one. this link in the okay. chat for whoever. Okay. And while you're doing that, I'll read the next question. Can okay. you repeat the information about the availability of vital records from 1896 to, uh, I assume that's 2012. Is okay. this data available at the library? So vital statistic records. So in Virginia, we have, during the colonial period, that information was recorded. It was usually recorded at the established church in Virginia, which was the Anglican Church. Um, so we do have some early colonial records that state birth, deaths, and marriages. Um, for the official, the official start date for the state of Virginia was 1853. So between the years of 1853 to 1896, you're going to find a large amount of our records for marriages, births, and deaths. However, Virginia in all its wiseness decided mm -hmm. We're going to stop collecting births, marriages, and deaths in the state of Virginia. And so from the period of 1896 up until 1912, none, I mean none, official records, no official records for the state were collected. However, certain urban areas, so like the city of Richmond, Lynchburg, some of the county, uh, some of the cities in Newport News in Northern Virginia, recorded that information. And so if you go to the library's main page, you go to research guides and indexes, and you go down to birth, death, and marriages vital records, and you go down to using vital statistic records in the Library of Virginia's archive, you will see our research guide that provides information on when it was collected, when it stopped, when it started again, how to find it, what other records you can use in its place. And that was one of the handouts you gave us. Oh, yes, uh, uh, yay, PDF, I so. did provide that one. <laughs> so, yay, yeah, some great information in those guides for sure. Okay, next question. If misinformation is ever discovered concerning one's family, who specifically should be contacted at the Library of Virginia? That's a good question. It depends on what it is. Is it like a Bible record or is it I like- I think that question was typed when you were talking about the Bibles. Okay, so if it's a Bible record, um, if you have something that contests it, we are more than happy to make it available. We're not gonna actually go in and change the, um, the Bible record that had that information. We'll just add it to our collection and then possibly in- the um, catalog where it has the catalog information, we are going to state that there might be some mis there might be uh, misinformation with names or dates or something. And then we will provide it and um, provide a link to the next scan of the Bible record. Um, if it's an official state record, I don't think we can change that, but I can get in contact with our state and local records um, team and find out for you. So if Whoever that is, um, please just email me and um, I can, we can do some follow up. Okay. Did the Library of Virginia do anything about extending renewal dates on the cards due to the library closure over the past 12 months? 
Yes, um, we did do that. Um, some uh, we did at the beginning of COVID, we did extend some of them. Um, if you do contact the Library of Virginia to find out if yours has, was one of those that automatically updated once COVID, once the library was shut down. Um, I can't tell you right off the bat whose was done, but um, you can contact the library to find out if it was automatically done. And then if you are a Virginia resident, you can do it online as well. Another question about library cards. The website yes. says that non-Virginia residents must visit the library in person to receive a library card. Is there a way around that? No. I'm sorry, <laughs> no. There's no way around it because we have to verify your information just for our purposes. Um, we just need to make sure you say who you are. We are trying to make sure everyone has their own identity. We don't want to keep, uh, have a record with somebody's different identity. So we run the information through the Department of Motor, record, uh, Motor Vehicles just to verify it. And that's why we can't do out of state um, uh, institution, uh, driver's license. Um, someone posted a bunch of hearts and said, love Library of Virginia. Many thanks for becoming a satellite family history center. Thank you. Um, we just, love it. This just, is my just second to know those, from home. Those, those in the Richmond area, the Family History Center on Monument Avenue did just reopen. At it too is by appointment only. Um, just wanted to throw that out there. It's, they have evening hours. where. <laughs> and then at the Library of Virginia. Virginia, when we became an affiliate library, we had a program with David Rencher, who is one of the heads at um, Family Search. Um, we, he did a program talking about what's available for affiliate libraries, and that's also available on our YouTube playlist, which is, you go to our homepage, scroll down to the bottom, and click this little arrow that looks like a play button, and that oh, will cool. get you straight to our YouTube playlist that has information on how to get oh, to the I library, see it there. other programs, stuff on our, our current exhibition on women's suffrage, the family playlist, and some of the other programs that we have at the library. Perfect. When you were talking about um, the African-American records, so yes. you got the question, in the record types, why do you not have wills, which many times mentioned the slaves? So that's just a collection we haven't um, made, we haven't digitized um, currently. So the, pro the project team of Virginia Untold hasn't moved on to wills. There's specific ones that strictly just state full out African-American names, their occurrences and records. We eventually, um, those will possibly be added to that collection. They just haven't been added recently. Um, we do have on Virginia memory um, cohab cohabitation records available on there as well. And then I know in the next coming year or so, um, the Virginia Untold team is going to be adding um, the free Negro registers to Virginia Untold. Perfect. Another question, colored and Negro was the forced classification. So are those combined, Aborigines also? Uh, okay, so for Virginia, <laughs> they would classify any person of color either as, I'm sorry for using these terms, either Negro, Mulatto, or Indian. So if you were of mixed ancestry in the state of Virginia, either of African or indigenous or of white uh, descent, you would be classified as mulatto. Um, if you were, um, the state of Virginia classified you as an African person or a person of African descent, you were considered a Negro. And then Indians were specifically classified for the indigenous population in Virginia. However, some Virginians did, of African descent did have indigenous blood. Um, if you look at the collection of freedom suits, those records, those are usually court cases where people of African descent are going to the local courts and stating, I should not be enslaved because I have indigenous blood. Um, some in um, certain indigenous groups in Virginia could not be enslaved. However, some could from out of state or if warring tribes brought some into Virginia to be sold in the slave markets, those that could take place. Um, but a good rule is most indigenous people in Virginia were not enslaved unless they had mixed ancestry. 
And so when you look in those freedom records, freedom suits, most of them are going to have a family genealogy in them because they had to prove nobody else could stand up and say, I know that they are of indigenous descent. They had to provide papers if they had them. They had to provide a family tree. All of the burden of proof was that on that person to state their claim. And I do see someone type in something about lovely, the lovely, unlovely man, Walter Plecker. He makes everything more complicated for indigenous people from his racial integrity act and then classifying every person, no matter what their distinction was, either white or colored in the state of Virginia. But don't get me started on Walter Plucker because I can talk about him forever. I study him. He's an icky man. Um, but <laughs> I can, there's, it's a really complicated story involving Walter Plucker. So that's something else I can talk about. <laughs> I hear you. It's just icky. Okay, you were talking about the transcriptions. Will you accept transcriptions of documents of this type that we have downloaded and transcribed? I don't know. If you're willing to donate them to the Library of Virginia, I think they can be added depending on what they are. So if you have specific records, they send me an email and I can pass it along to the department at the Library of Virginia to find out how that goes on and they can get in contact with you. Terrific. Lots and lots of thank you for the lovely presentations. Lots of great information. It's a great site. It's better organized now. Um, people joining the Facebook group already. Um, I have to go on now and approve everybody. <laughs> I know I'm going to have a lot of names. I learned <laughs> so I much about what's available. Tonight, you'll have access first thing in the morning. <laughs> learned so much about what's available in Virginia. One of the most information packed talks I've joined in a while. Um, will the recording be available to, for non grieving members? Yes, uh, we will make that available. At, um, we'll have a link on our website, uh, the same place where we have all the handouts, which answers the next question. Someone asked, are, um, are there handouts available? They're on the Grieva website. Just go, the first thing you see will be uh, information about tonight's talk and just scroll down a little bit. They're about part way down the page. Um, let's see, I'm scrolling. How far back have you researched your family? <laughs> That's a good question. I get that question all the time. I haven't done mine. I know everyone's going to look at me. Why haven't you done that yours? Um, I haven't done it because I haven't had enough time to actually do it. I have other things that are occupying my time, which are lovely presentations like this, but hopefully... Fingers crossed I can do mine. I know I have roots in Virginia, South Carolina, and um, possibly some in Maryland as well. So I will possibly be looking into that eventually. <laughs> I just don't know when. <laughs> Yeah, it's always the problem with a professional genealogist is they have spent so much time on everybody else and they don't get to research their own as much as they'd like. Yes, and I get that all the time. And I hate saying that I don't because I work at a library where I should be able to do that, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> okay, if my library card is expired during COVID, can it be renewed from home without me having to come into the library? I believe you said if, for Virginia residents. Yes. And then you can access that if you have any questions about that, go up to the Google search bar and type in, um, if you can spell correctly, <laughs> library card. And then you will go to library card and circulation policies, proceed on um, procedures. And then we have a section talking about Virginia residents and non-Virginia residents. So that will clarify what Virginia residents can do and what non-Virginia residents have access to as well. But remember to always check Virginia memory because all of that information and certain things on our catalog are available to you without a library card. They are available to you without a library card. Available to you without a library card. That if you take <laughs> anything away. So what was that again? <laughs> Virginia memory equals no library no card. No library card, yes. Speaking, though, of cards, there's one more question about the cards. Um, someone has had a card somewhere but lost it years ago, wants to know what she should do. Okay, depending on how old the card is, um, you will be, um, you do, if you're a Virginia resident or not, there is a fee to get a new one. But if it's really, really old, you just have to sign up for a new one. Perfect. 
Okay. Um, do you have records of where burial plots are located in a public cemetery, if you know the name? And one of your workshops, I noticed, I forget which month, but there's Virginia Cemetery Records at Library of Virginia was one of the upcoming workshops. Yes, that is in September. Um, we're doing a workshop on cemetery records at the Library of Virginia. And then we are going to have a, a book talk as well as a panel discussion about um, African-American cemeteries. So the book talk is by Dr. Ryan Smith. Ryan K. Smith, he's a professor at VCU who just released a book on um, cemeteries in Virginia. And then we will have a panel discussion on why African-American cemeteries are constantly not being maintained, the preservation efforts for cemeteries and what the different groups throughout Virginia are doing. Um, is it a specific cemetery you're looking at? <laughs> because we don't have a lot, but we do have some cemetery records. Are they looking for in the city or somewhere else? Um, that was not mentioned. Okay. In um, so I would advise looking in um, the catalog first. Um, I can let you know for African-American cemeteries in Virginia, in Richmond, we have Evergreens and Woodlawns um, cemetery records in our collection. So that would include the interment cards. We have a map of the cemetery. I don't know the dates on it, but we do have the map of it. Um, for some of the um, cemetery, uh, we have, if we don't have the actual cemetery records, we do have a collection, a collection of business records for a tombstone company in our collection that did a lot of the tombstones for um, Hollywood and a couple other predominantly white cemeteries. And then we do have information for ones that are affiliated with churches. So if you're like uh, connected to a church and it's uh, it, we have the church record, that possibly could be in the church records as well. And then depending on where those records are, you always want to check with the actual cemetery because sometimes they don't have not made them available to the Library of Virginia or some other institution. So going to the actual cemetery um, office or contacting them is about the best option. And then if you don't have any information on that, um, go to the Department of Virginia, uh, Virginia Department of Historic Resources. They can also provide you some information on some of the uh, ones that are unknown. Great. And current, I think this month they have produced information on some of the cemetery information in Virginia. So if you check out their Facebook page, they have posted some information about cemeteries as well. Cool. Next question, does for the Library of Virginia share any information with the Virginia Historical Society? Yes, <laughs> we do. We work hand in hand. Um, but some of our records are strictly at the Library of Virginia and some of their records are strictly at the Historical Society. So um, if you contact either the Library of Virginia or the Historical Society, they will tell you it's at our institution or at their institution or any other institution in the state. So if you're unsure about that, please contact the library or contact whatever institution you're looking at and they can lead you in the right direction. And if they don't, contact me and I can help you. Perfect. Uh, Donna says that the library guide is wonderful. Thanks for the, the work to reorganize and make the indexes and old research guides easier to find, use, and directly link to a specific item. Yes, I know. <laughs> I, I, loved it. I loved our old catalog. I had just started to learn our old catalog and then they decided to change it. And I was like, I just learned the <laughs> old one. Don't change it on me. <laughs> but they did, and it's just as easy to navigate and smooth. So just spend a little bit of time in there and you will get the hang of it, I promise. I've got a couple of transcribe questions. One yeah. is, is the program still going on? Yes, it is. And I do believe we have one this weekend. Hold on, let me look at my work calendar. If it wasn't this weekend, we did have one last weekend. Yes, they still are doing transcribed events um, once a month um, or a couple of times a month. So stay tuned to our uh, calendar events on our website or our Facebook page as well. So um, I will post that information there. 
but you can also do it outside of the events too. Yes, you don't have to do it. You can do it at your own leisure on the transcribe website. And then if you have grandchildren or children that are looking for community service hours, they can get community service hours by doing um, transcriptions on making history transcribe in um, from the page. The other question was, how do I get to the transcribe program? And that was just part of Virginia memory, right? Yes. So uh, let's go. Hold on. Ah. So if you go to virginiamemory.com and you go, this is the homepage. It's right there on the homepage. There is making history transcribe and from the page. And then our newspaper um, has an OCR correction um, database uh, access to it as well. So if you see misprints or something in the newspaper that is incorrect, you can also go in there and um, type that in the section as well. Okay, lots more thank yous and excellence and thank you so much. And uh, it seems like everybody had a great time. Um, again, questions about the handouts. The handouts are on the Grieva webpage and the recording. We will also, we'll probably send you an email with a link to the recording and we'll also put a link to it on our website. It will be on YouTube. It won't be part of the Library of Virginia's channel though. It'll be part of Grieva's channel. And so then, we'll send yeah, sorry, Paula. Go ahead, please. And so if Paula shares it on Griva, I will share it on the Facebook page as well. Oh, cool. Thank you. I'm, I'm a member of that group, so I should probably say. <laughs> <post laughs> and you can post it, Paula. <laughs> hint, hint, hint. Yeah. Um, I'm not. Oh, no. You, I do you have to have do to. a little bit of editing, so it probably won't be until tomorrow that the recording will be available. All right. Thank you very much. If there are no other questions, I guess we can let. Ashley have have some have her evening so she can start letting everybody into the Facebook group. <laughs> yes, I will gladly get ready to go do that. And um, I'm just dropping my email in the chat. So if anyone has any questions that didn't get covered during the presentation or they have something after watching the presentation, please feel free to contact me either through the um, my email or post it on the Facebook page. Terrific. Thank you everyone for attending and thank you so much, Ashley, for some great information. You're welcome and have a good night. I see Thanks. some of my regulars, so I'm so happy <laughs> to see you. It's been a long time, but so when we come back to the library, please come in and thank you, Paula and Donna and Griva. Please, thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me to present tonight. Hey, thank Ashley? You. Yes. Ashley? Yes. You still there? Yes, yeah. I'm here. Yes, you are. Okay. This is Mary Beth Dalton. And yes. I, you're, I love your presentation. You are Thank you. amazed at how quickly you have learned so much about the collection. And you really know the collection. I'm impressed. Um, ah, you, I can't say learning. I know it that well. <laughs> well, I, I've you, been there you know, almost three years. You know, so. you know real well what you spoke about tonight. There's only one thing. The state did not collect marriage records starting in 1853. Births and deaths, but not marriages. The, Just the, FYI. The, it's for certain, it depends on this. <laughs> It depends on the county because certain counties did send that information to the state. It just depends. It's always check your local places first. It, not yeah. every not everybody did it, but certain mm -hmm. places did it. Certain counties, certain cities, everybody yeah, so doesn't do it. You've taught me something because every place I've looked, they never had marriage records. It was just it's, birth it's, and death. It just depends on the county. Um, it all depends on the county. At the county or the city, if they decided they wanted to collect it, they would have collected the same thing with um, during that period of um, when there was no official state record, certain counties, certain cities collected that and other counties they were like, nope, since we don't have to, the state doesn't want it, we aren't doing it. And yeah. that's the same thing with census records, certain um, counties did county censuses. So some of those records are available at the library on microfilm. So that's also something to look at, but certain other counties did not as well. Mm -hmm. So it's always a hit or miss because it's like, ah, but um, tell always start at the library first and then go to the local courthouse or the city or county courthouse because more than likely we might have it in our collection and that all depends on if the local courthouse decided to give us the records because the library of Virginia does not own 
any of the records. We do not own those records. The counties own those records and they can decide which records come to the library and which ones they keep. And if they decide to take them all back, which we hope they don't do, they can take them back. And we'd much to. rather come to the library in where it's air conditioned and heated and carpeted. And I the can't say the heat's always clean. working or the AC's always working, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> much better than crawling around on the floor, picking up microfilm books. And it, uh, it's yes. always so nice at the library. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ashley, before you leave, would you please again, give us that Facebook page? Is yeah. that Library of Virginia or? Yeah. What? Yes, give me one second. Okay. Oh, oh my goodness, I see I have a lot of them already. <laughs> I have 25 people requesting. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. All right. Some that's of us the, were members already. So <laughs> yes, so these are that's the um, link in the for the Facebook group. Okay. I was I was kind of surprised to find my own face in there one time. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I shared your presentation, Paula. <laughs> Thank you. Ashley, this has been great. And if you're wondering, you hit a record 235 tonight. Yes. <laughs> the record yay. for you and a record and a record for us too. Oh, yay. This will be my largest one. <laughs> I've never spoken to this many people yeah. ever. The, the Library of Virginia is always a crowd pleaser, that's for sure. Yes. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank thank you, you so much. Have a good night, everyone. And if you have any questions, post them on the Facebook page or email me.